Africa's largest oil refinery is going dark possibly forever. The Shell and BPSA Petroleum Refineries facility, known as SAPREF, is responsible for over a third of the country's refinery capability. This is the third major South African refinery to shut down since 2020. What does this mean for fuel security, for the economy, and international confidence in the country? To answer this, we're joined by energy economist Lungile Mashile. Lungile, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. So what's led this joint venture to decide not to go forward with the refinery? And what does that mean for South Africa's fuel security? Thank you so much for having me. So there are two major issues. In 2023, we've got the carbon tax, which is kicking in. Um, and this basically means that South African entities, such as your SAPREF, as well as ESCOM, will start having to pay a carbon tax on their emissions. Over and above that, in the SAPREF case also, as far back as 2006, there were amendments um, uh, for new fuel standards. And what it said there is that there will be a prohibition on uh, lead in our fuel and there will also be a reduction in the sulfur content. Now, this is all well and good, especially for us consumers and for our health also. However, it has implications for the refineries because then they have to upgrade their refineries to meet these fuel standards. Um, and we know that for all the refineries to meet these fuel standards, it would take an investment of about six 60 billion rand and something that refineries have said continuously that they might battle with and they might not be able to afford as well as the carbon tax as well. It's also very important to remember that with refineries, they are not able to pass this cost down to consumers. So they absorb this cost completely. And so obviously they sat down in their offices, they did their cost benefit analysis and they basically said, this is too much of a cost. There's no real benefit to us. We would rather shut down. In terms of security of supply, this is a major, major issue. And they raised it also on their side to say they will try by all means to ensure security of supply. But then this then runs into making sure that imports are available in the country. So South Africa had six big refineries. Uh, what's the number now? Um, currently, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but I mean, SAPREF is now shutting down. Engine has said that by this year, they are uh, converting their refinery um, into um, cleaner fuels, um, well, to import cleaner fuels is what they're going to do. So that seems to be the general consensus around major refineries. So possibly looking at about three left. Um, and this is where they are now heading to, to say we'd rather import than to continue refining because the costs do not make sense to us. Uh, the importing of refined fuels has increased over the years. Is, is that a good thing for South Africa? And where does that leave you and I, the consumer? It's not really a good thing. I mean, if you look at the basic fuel price, um, how it's calculated, a very big portion of that, if you're looking at import fuels, relies on supply and demand in country and outside. It, re it, it relies on geopolitics, on the RAND dollar exchange rate, on so many externalities that South Africa is not in control of. And this is why people will often say, but our fuel price is increasing and, you know, and, and it affects inflation also. So let's be cognizant of that point. Um, and this is why it's not necessarily a good thing. Also, if you're looking at what is happening geopolitically now with Ukraine and Russia, should something happen and they go to war, it will affect global supply chains for oil and gas. And ultimately, because we are we are a net importer as South Africa, it will, imp it will impact us as one of the harshest countries that will be impacted if these two countries decide to go to war. And this is why it's so important to have refineries, your own ref re refineries in your own country, to be able to control your own consumption your own supply and your own demand and to act as a buffer should anything happen outside of your country and obviously to ensure security of supply with what is happening now we're basically at the hands of the world uh, Lungile, you mentioned the cost of keeping these refineries operational and then you've also just mentioned the importance of keeping refineries operational in your your country and keeping control of those but if the country's central uh, energy fund does decide to buy SAPREF, is that a good decision given the cost? And is there a business model that would work uh, to keep it going? 
So this is when, you know, again, that SAFE would have to sit down and do their own cost-benefit analysis. One of the very key things is that there are jobs that will be lost. Subref, in their statement, they, they said that there will not be an impact on permanent jobs. However, we, and, and, you know, we're looking at about 5,000 jobs here in the refinery space. We're not entirely sure what the breakdown between permanent, between contractor is. We're also looking at the entire fuel value chain, and that employs about 80,000 direct employees and about 300,000 indirect employees. So you're looking at that just from an employment point of view, that you cannot have further unemployment in this country. Over and above that, looking at security of supply. So there is, you know, a um, possibility that should SEF take, take this over or fund, you know, or find uh, additional backing or, you know, funders, that they could just shut down all the smaller refineries and have one big massive refinery. And then that cost is anything between 150 to 250 billion rand as an investment. And, you know, it's hard for me to sit here and say, how much is a job worth? How much is security of supply worth? How much is it worth for us to be independent and not to be reliant on global pressures? Um, and this is a decision that SEF will have to reach, as well as government itself. And key also is that with our advancement of these carbon um, uh, mitigation measures, how much of our economy are we also willing to trade and give away for these carbon mitigation measures? And this is a key thing going forward. Final question, Lungile. Uh, should, uh, uh, should this joint venture pull out of SAPREF, what message does this send internationally about investing in South Africa and doing business in South Africa? In all fairness, um, this has been coming since 2006, and they've moved it. To, and, they, and they initially moved. It was set for 2017. Was when these clean fuel standards were going to take place. They then requested it to be moved, and now we're seeing it at September 2023. So they had ample time to make these conversions to their refineries. However, it all boils down to cost, and I don't think it sends a negative image or um, negative perception. It's basically companies that are coming together, private entities whose sole pur purpose is shareholder profit maximization. And they're basically saying our shareholders are not interested in losing money. Refineries already operate at thin operating margins and they are not prepared to lose any more money. They'd rather shut down and import fuel for, for, for us because it's better for them than actually trying to refine it in country. So it's not a negative message, but perhaps it's a message to, to government saying that if we pursue these clean mitigation measures, they do come at an economic cost and this is the cost. All right. Lungile, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Energy, and, uh, energy analyst and economist Lungile Mashile.